Okay, uh, today is June 13th, uh, 2012, and um, I'm uh, feeling sufficiently rested after a very long patch of work um, that I want to show off a little bit. I'm feeling pretty happy about uh, the garden these days and what where things are going and with it. Um, we, the family and I, uh, Nick and the kids, uh, and myself, we've been in CSAs for years and years and years, and um, last year we didn't, and this year we're not, largely because uh, our garden is starting to get really substantial. Um, and uh, uh, and I'm getting into it more and more. And so last year we had a plot that was about 8 by 12. This year our plot is a good uh, about 15 by 15. And um, uh, I expanded the plot into the yard, and oh, a, squeak, a lot of cars with squeaky brakes. Um, expanded the plot into the yard, and uh, last year we, I tried to hay bale, um, uh, hay bale uh, growing, and that worked pretty well. But I'm not doing it this year just because I don't know, just didn't have time to get hay bales and too much going on. Um, and I'm standing in front of the garden. I'm not showing you yet because I want to just finish talking about what I'm talking about um, before we get there. But um, so, uh, but one thing I did do last year is I had a couple of pots uh, by the entrance to the garden where I have um, uh, planted in them. Uh, we had uh, zucchini and uh, crookneck squash and. Um, I didn't mean to plant all these things in them last year or this year, but uh, of course I feed the plants with compost, and our compost has got lots of the vegetables that we eat, and so they show up here. So actually, some of the it's like very very likely that some of the CSA vegetables that we bought in the last few years we're getting double triple duty out of because the seeds ended up in the compost, and the compost ended up in our garden. So here we have uh, the big leaves. These guys. Those in theory are um, either uh, yellow, some kind of yellow squash, maybe crookneck or regular yellow squash. They might be zucchinis too. I cannot remember what I put in there. Um, coming up in between them, however, though, that looks to me very much like it might be a pepper of some kind. I also have tomatoes. Did not plant them. Here's another thing that looks like it's probably a pepper. Um, and uh, lots of tomato plants coming up in those too. So I'm going to have to thin these pots out shortly. So the pots are kind of the entrance to the garden. Uh, if we go through the gate, back up, this doesn't have much of a wide angle, but if we go through the gate, um, things are a little bit overgrown right now because I'm just coming off of teaching for a while. So here is our, here's our garden. That big green composter was a, a, a curb curb issue. We got that about six months ago and it allowed us to get rid of our standing compost pile which is where I'm pointing the camera where you see the there's a potting table back there that was where it once where our that was where our compost pile once was. So if I go back here now that structure right there is our coop uh, for the girls who are back there you can kind of see the tail end of one or a couple of them. Um, the girls we have uh, seven laying hens um, three Australorps, two Golden Comets, and two um, uh, Leghorns, Foghorn Leghorns. Um, and this is the garden. Let me back up to get some perspective on it. I'm quite proud of it this year. Um, we have around the edges, you can see that green right there, those are mostly, um, I want to say pickle plants, cucumber plants. And um, those, I, those I planted, we started from uh, uh, seed and um, didn't work. <laughs> and then we got some starters, and the starters managed to take. I tried to start the garden a little early because it was so warm this spring. Um, oddballs show up in here too. This plant right here that's starting, got a little bit of a yellow flower on it. That's uh, uh, a pepper plant of some kind, probably a bell pepper. I don't know what kind though. Uh, didn't plant it. Um, in the rows, we've got uh, the, the cucumbers are by the edge, and then we've got raised rows. I've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, six rows through the middle. Uh, I've got uh, mostly uh, tomato plants running through the, the first th three aisles, and then, uh, and those are all staked. Um, 
and uh, doing quite nicely. It, as I said, it's a, the the now the middle of June, so we're doing pretty well. We should uh, we're, our our plants are just about to flower. Uh, I would exp uh, the tomatoes are our cucumbers are already flowering and getting ready to produce fruit. We should start start to see cucumbers in the next. I would say a week to two weeks. Uh, they're moving really quickly. So these three rows are mostly tomatoes and we have a few other pop-ups in between. There are some kinds of various kinds of squash and other things that have uh, come up in the compost. I didn't plant that that I'm pointing at right now. Um, nor did I plant that, nor that, nor that. There. So we, we, we have lots of surprises, lots of squash related surprises coming up. Might even get a, might even get a, um, a watermelon out of all this, who knows. Um, so in this row, however, this row you see is not uh, nearly as so green as the other ones. These are the, in the in the hoops here. We have uh, what are uh, supposed to be jalapenos, and they are growing very very slowly. And I'm hoping that they will pick up soon. Um, and if they don't, I've got tons of tomato seedlings that have come up in odd places that I'm going to replant into those. Next to them, in the first row here, you can see, perhaps, uh, this is, these are salad greens of various kinds. I've got uh, curly lettuce and red lettuce and, and romaine and different things. And we're just about heading to the end of our salad season. We have to eat a, a wild bunch of sa salad uh, before uh, I replant our, our, uh, our salad rows. So we get another, we'll get it, we'll get maybe, I might get two more, two more runs of salad. Uh, out of the summer before it gets too cold. Uh, up against the fence, that uh, rather uh, confused looking um, vine right there is uh, another uh, cucumber and uh, you can see it's already, possibly it's already flowering and I've just uh, trained it up onto the to the uh, fence and it hasn't realized uh, its, orienta its new orientation yet. I got another one there, another one there, and then there's a thing popping up in the middle there. It's a stray uh, a stray um, potato plant. We have a potato patch as well. Um, these guys here, some form of uh, squash, I can't remember what, probably, it might be zucchinis, I'm not sure. They, uh, the leaves are uh, very big, so we'll see what they turn into. Very big, robust looking uh, uh, plant um, growing up the side of the coop. Uh, got another one here, but the girls are kind of chewing off the ends of it, so we'll see what it does. Um, and then I've got a mystery vine right there who's uh, coming up slowly, but I think he's getting himself together. Uh, I've got a few onions here, some cilantro. I just planted some more little cilantro seedlings there. Hopefully they'll get big before I step on them. Um, I've got uh, some broccoli type things hiding in the corner there. Um, there's a pepper I didn't plant. Most of what you see, the green here though, most of this is um, are our potato plants which are doing super. This is all Yukon Gold and they are basically um, from um, potatoes that uh, started to, to go uh, the wrong way in our pantry. And uh, uh, My wife put them in the compost and um, they were still alive so I pulled them out of the compost and sliced them and stuck them in here and here we have our potato patch. We've done in the past um, our first potato patch we never planted. It just came up when, uh, out of the compost that we had. There were live uh, potatoes in there and we uh, uh, they just showed up one year and we got about half a bushel which was and they were delicious. So um, potatoes uh, from my point of view are a bit more than a bit of a treat um, uh, in the garden. Uh, behind the the potato patch. Uh, we've got some herbs. I've got oregano back there. Um, oregano, God, there's another pepper plant. They, they show up all over the place. Um, I've got a, another squash hiding back there. Or it might be a, um, a cucumber, but I think it's a squash. And then um, um, more cilantro. I've got dill. Um, tons of oregano back there. We've got a, a patch of mint that I planted yeah, anybody who knows mint, you know what happens with mint. It's just a, it's a weed. It's wonderful. It grows everywhere. We uh, harvest a ton of it in the fall usually and put it up in the pantry for mint tea. It's really nice. Uh, along the back here, things that are not succeeding so well. Well, actually, these uh, cucumbers are doing really well. But next to them, if you can see right there, is a little some red stems. Those are supposed to be beets, but they don't seem to be doing terribly well. Um, that's our... Um, kind of main garden. Um, 
in here. I can see my uh, here are my jalapenos that are those have been in the ground for almost a month and they have barely grown. So um, I'm hoping that uh, they will warm up shortly and uh, start to grow. I'm told that they like it really hot. Um, but the garden itself, we'll do a little bit of a scan. The garden itself overall, we're doing pretty darn well. Our tomato plants are uh, between a, oh, I would say a little over a foot, probably about 15, 16 inches and growing. And we'll, those, will, those will come up uh, probably two or three inches a week at least. And um, as I said, we should see flowers on those really soon. Um, and um, tons of lettuce still to harvest. I might uh, harvest a bag and give it to a, to a really nice neighbor. Ah, uh, bumbly bee. I haven't seen a lot of those, sadly. Um, hopefully we'll start to see a lot more. I have not seen loads of bees around. Um, our... Uh, this tree right here is uh, that kind of takes some of the sun away from the garden is uh, our cherry tree and uh, it is not producing wildly well this year. We had a, um, after we had a really long warm spell which convinced all the plants that uh, spring was here in February and March, uh, we got a couple good hard freezes which just about did in all the all the cherry development. Um, the flowers, the cherry tr flowers are on the cherry tree for almost three weeks, which is unheard of, and um, because of the warm weather. And then they got a good freeze and just screwed up all the pollination. So we're going to get, we'll get a couple quarts, maybe a gallon of cherries off of our tree. Uh, our other trees, you can see some cher a couple tray cherries. We should have fistfuls, like. We've, we're, it's. I'm sure the farms think it's not even worth picking these. But we should have fistfuls instead of, like, you see a couple stray cherries here. So that's kind of crappy. This area right here behind the coop, here's the, the coop that we were looking at earlier. Um, this area behind the coop uh, is where the compost pile used to be. And this is going to be, uh, in my thinking, eventually this will become the new run for the chickens. Um, but that will probably be a year or so off. Um, what we like to do with the chickens is we like to have them give them the run of the garden during the uh, during the off season. That way they uh, they uh, turn over the soil. They uh, um, and they poop. We like chickens pooping on the garden because they uh, they fertilize it. That's part of the main reason. I, that's that's the main reason I got chickens. Um, then I discovered how wonderful they are to have around. They're really fun. Um, and um, you really uh, having them around, you you it, you really feel like you're close to nature. <laughs> that just makes no sense whatsoever, perhaps. But they're really they're they're uh, they're quite uh, fun to watch, and uh, they're easy. Once you get the setup done, they're just easy. It's not much to take care of them at all. Um, it's easier for me to take care of a flock of seven chickens than it is to take care of a cat. Um, down below here, I have. Uh, a new raspberry scape and I've got these are scapes that we put in that were given to us by a friend about two years last summer well not two years last summer so they're doing outstandingly well if you take a close look we have uh, oh, I'm pointing at the wrong thing right there all kinds of raspberries to be so we're going to be getting a, a pretty good, uh, we'll get a couple pints of raspberries off of this bush this year. So, but I've got a new scape that a friend of mine uh, down the street, Kelly McWinters, gave me. And uh, I've got more scapes over here. This is a wisteria that I put in a few years ago. Um, but here's, uh, here's another scape, another scape. She says well, some of these are blackberries, which I love blackberries, perhaps even more than raspberries. Yes, I like them more than raspberries. Uh, black, uh, more scape there. Another scape. This scape is not scaping so well. He's he may not make it. We'll see. We'll give him a little time. He's looking a little forlorn. I might uh, drop some uh, some uh, plant food on him to see if he'll come back. And that's pretty much the tour of the garden. Um, we've uh, uh, of the vegetable garden and the and the kind of edibles that we have in the backyard here. The plan long term is. Uh, I have a greenhouse ready to uh, to install after this summer. I'm 
putting a roof on the house. Once that's done, then I'll be doing, uh, probably next summer I'll be doing a greenhouse. I'm really looking forward to doing that. I've been waiting to do that. I've had this greenhouse disassembled here and uh, had the plans done for a couple of years. That is a disassembled Lloyd and Burnham greenhouse. Uh, you can see there's a heater, heater, which I'm not going to install, so I'm not terribly worried about what happens to it. Um, uh, so Lloyd and Burnham greenhouse will go up attached to the back of the house and so then we'll have growing stuff happening all year long here so um, that'll be our kind of urban, urban homesteading um, I'll be doing uh, we'll have, we're gonna have the plan is to have solar panels on the roof and um, once the roof is done we'll have solar panels on the roof we'll have a little more space in the attic um, because the attic will be finished so we'll have more living space, probably another bedroom up there, and um, a I think a creative room for the kids. We may move the desks out of their rooms and put them up there and put uh, art tables and storage supply things up there so they can do their art and music or whatever. They, they're, it'll be their creative room. And um, we'll have a spare bedroom upstairs, and, uh, or, or it'll become the master bedroom, and we'll have a spare room on the second floor. So it'll be much more, right now we're a little bit cheek by jowl, and we're kind of wait, been kind of waiting for me to get up on the roof and do the, do the stuff up there. So um, those are our big plans. This, um, the roof that's going up is going to be a metal roof, but I'm really kind of getting off the topic of my original, my original post which is to say that's the garden and that is the garden um, that's the shine garden I'll do an update at some point uh, soon and um, probably uh, a little before harvest time or when things are really starting to come off the vines and um, starting to get really good eaten so far we've gotten salad which is really nice but more to come soon that's our happy garden <laughs>